Some say history is a river that flows endlessly. I say that history is a series of stories written by each person's experiences. Welcome to Stories, a history of Appalachia, one story at a time. Welcome back, folks, to another episode of Stories, a history of Appalachia. I'm Steve Gilly, along with Rod Mullins. And, Rod, you've got the story today of Sergeant Darrell Shifty Powers. Yes, I do. Dickinson County native from the small town of Clinchco, which was the main part of operations for Clinchfield Coal Company before they later moved to Dant, Virginia. But Shifty was born in Clinchco. His father was an excellent rifle and pistol shot. And as Shifty grew up over time, he spent a lot of time with his dad and a lot of time in the outdoors, and he honed his skills to becoming probably one of the best sharpshooters you would ever find anywhere. And during that time, he got to a point that he could throw a coin in the air and he could hit it with a rifle. But now that's not how he got the nickname of Shifty. He got the nickname of Shifty from playing basketball in his days in school and his ability to be, as he put it, Shifty on his feet. But now as we talk more about Shifty Powers, if you're not familiar with who I'm talking about right now, maybe this will bring something to mind. Uh, Many of you probably remember the HBO miniseries back several years ago. I guess it's been 20. Has it been about 20 years now or maybe about 15 years? Band of Brothers, based upon the book by Stephen Ambrose. Oh, yeah, indeed. And there's also a book called Shifty's War by journalist Marcus Brotherton, which captures his full life story. Uh, in addition to the uh, Band of Brothers book. Yeah, and I think that the uh, journalist spent a good amount of time in Clinchco talking with Shifty about this and finding out about World War II and getting uh, his take on what happened. Let's give you a little bit of background about this. When we talk about World War II, there are men that come back from the war. Some of them have become so larger than life. They talk about it as though it was a great adventure, that they did something as though they were almost along the lines of Superman. Daryl Shifty did not talk about it. He was some of the uh, ones that just really didn't want to talk about it. I know one other uh, gentleman now who has passed on that participated at D-Day at Normandy, and even up until the day he died, he would not hardly talk about D-Day and what happened at Normandy. And for a time being, my dad worked with him for Clinchfield Coal Company, which we'll get into here in just a minute. But for a long time, my dad told me that some of the men would ask him at different times of what it was like during that time. He really didn't want to talk about it. He wouldn't talk about it because it was such a traumatic point and a traumatic experience in a lot of young men's lives during that time. But as the book came out for Band of Brothers and they started focusing a little bit on the miniseries with Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks when they put that together – Shifty began to kind of come out of his shell a little bit more and talk about what had happened and some of the things that brought them all together. So after Shifty graduated from high school, he took a machinist course in vocational school. He went to Norfolk to be able to do that. And then from that point on, he befriended a uh, gentleman there by the name of Popeye Wynn. The two went to work for the shipyards in Portsmouth after finishing the course. But then later on, They found out that they were about to be frozen to their jobs, and that is they were about to be stuck in them. They went to sign up for the U.S. Army, and Powers enlisted on the 14th of August, 1942, in Richmond. He went to train and became a member of what was referred to as Easy Company. They went to Camp Tacoa, Georgia, and as things went on, he was transferred over to Alderborn, England. I hope I got the pronunciation of that right. And when he went over there, he was shocked to see that a lot of the residents were prepared to defend themselves against the Germans with only garden tools. And when we say that, uh, I know that a lot of uh, over in England and and some of the places, there, there are a lot of people that's not really too keen on having firearms, per se, like we are in the United States. And, you know, really standing up for that Second Amendment right that we have here, they kind of frown on that a little bit more over there but during that time of world war ii and fighting in world war ii the english uh, at that time or the uh, british wanted to go and they wanted to go out and fight with anything they could get their hands on because hitler started bombing the heck out of london in the blitzkrieg and they were ready to stand up and fight so 
During this time, you know, Shifty had made the comment that he thought it'd be a massacre if the Germans had indeed invaded Aldborn, England, because of probably the uh, the feeling and the uh, unity and the brotherhood of support from all the people there in the town. But what he ended up doing after he got there, he jumped uh, into Normandy on D-Day, and we all remember when D-Day took place, June 6, 1944. But unfortunately, Shifty missed his drop zone. Uh, all the zones were kind of made up along the line of what Eisenhower and, and his uh, other generals had uh, worked out about Omaha Beach and uh, you know, the Canadians were supposed to land at one place, the Americans were supposed to land at one place, and it was supposed to be an all-out effort push on the beaches at Normandy is what it was supposed to be. Just one big push because the Germans were not expecting this. Well, Shifty missed his drop zone, but he linked up with Easy Company several days later to fight in uh, Cretan, I think is the name of that, and he participated in a military operation then called Operation Market Garden in the Netherlands. Now, he also fought in the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium, which, as a matter of fact, I had an uncle that fought in the Battle of the Bulge. He told me at one time when I was very young, he said it was probably one of the bloodiest battles that he had ever participated in. He was in the Army for at least four years at that time, but he said that Battle of the Bulge was very bad. I think during that time, Steve, he also brought home some um, souvenirs, which I'm sure a lot of people uh, back in those days brought home souvenirs of the German troops and coins and different things of that nature. But on December 29th in 1944, Easy Company was staying in the woods. Powers noticed a tree that was not there just the day before, and then he reported it. Come to find out that the tree was ultimately discovered to be a part of camouflage that the Germans had put up for their anti-aircraft battery. And so what ended up happening? Well, it all happened because Shifty saw a tree almost a mile away that hadn't been there the day before, at least according to the quote. And it was one of Powers' most truly remarkable achievements and a testament to the extraordinary gifts his backwoods upbringing brought him and also that he brought to Easy Company. Now, that's the reason why they refer to him as such a great sharpshooter. Because he pointed out that tree, they opened fire on it and destroyed it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of him having such a, a sharp eye, there's another story about him in January of 1945 when Easy Company was uh, pinned down by German troops and by a sniper, a German sniper. Nobody could locate this sniper, but suddenly Powers yells, I see him fires his rifle, and kills the sniper. Now, the neat thing about this is that when they found the sniper's corpse, the bullet hole was centered right square in the middle of his forehead. Yeah, well, one of his friends, Wynn, uh, as I mentioned, Popeye Wynn, he made the quote, and he said, you know, it just doesn't pay to be a shooter at Shifty when he's got a rifle. <laughs> Well, I, I remember seeing, I guess, an illustration of this to a certain degree on Band of Brothers when they showed the miniseries, and I saw an illustration of that. Nobody else could pinpoint this guy. This guy was shooting all over the place, and when the young man who was uh, playing uh, Shifty Powers in the uh, miniseries, Peter Youngblood Hills, he... He had, he had spent some time also with Shifty, trying to get an idea of what Shifty had been through and all the different things that happened. And I can remember this taking place, and Peter Youngblood Hills just screams out loud, I see him, and then fires the shot, and they get him. And yeah. it was it was a very quick thing, but they were very surprised once they found the corpse, as you said. But Powers was one of the very few who was never, and this is a surprise, never wounded in combat. Now, that kind of surprised me. I would thought at least someone, at least at one point or another, a little bit of shrapnel or something like that during, during the course of this, but he was never wounded in combat. And partly because of that, Powers lacked the sufficient points to return home under the military point system. So they kind of rewarded you, I guess, back then, Steve. If you got hurt, mm -hmm. they'd say, well, you get to go home a little bit faster. Although the, he was there every day when Easy Company fought on the line. But Powers ended up joining a lottery that was organized to allow one man from each company to return home early on a furlough. And he won his lottery, and the rest of the company rigged it in his favor, according to the story, removing their own names, and thus he was set to return to stateside. And during the trip to the airfield, the vehicle that Shifty was in was involved in an accident. He was badly injured. 
Now, not in the course of being on the battlefield, but he was injured in the accident, and he spent months recuperating in a hospital overseas while his comrades in arms arrived home long before he did. Now, later on, uh, Shifty went on and became a machinist. He was married to his wife, Dorothy, for 60 years. Both have since passed away, Shifty first and then his wife here uh, not long ago. At one point, he moved to California. He got a machinist job there, stayed there for three years with his family. When he was laid off there, he came back to work, and he worked for Clinchfield Coal Company during that time for more than 20 years. And then later in his life, that's when he was kind of sitting around. He was depressed. His health was declining. And then they noted the release of the Band of Brothers TV miniseries, but they had also interviewed him during this time, too, to kind of enhance and help the miniseries be understood a little bit better by uh, the people watching it. He's listed as one of the 20 men from Easy Company who contributed to a 2009 book, uh, We Who Are Alive and Remain, The Untold Stories of the Band of Brothers. And uh, Shifty passed away on uh, 17th of June, 2009, in Dickinson County, Virginia. Uh, He succumbed to lung cancer, and he's buried in Castlewood in Russell County, Virginia. But the thing about Shifty is, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, Shifty did not talk about the war. He didn't talk about the war quite, you know, at length as some people did because he just did not want to talk about the bloodshed and the killing and things like that. And and Steve, I don't know if you had a chance to watch Saving Private Ryan. I had a chance to finally get up the nerve here several years ago to watch Saving Private Ryan. And that was just a sample. Just a sample yeah. and that is film too, but yeah, These they, are they men were very that, realistic on that landing yeah. at Omaha Beach. Yeah, yeah, it's a very realistic, uh, you know, interpretation of it that Steven Spielberg did. And you know, there were stories that a lot of the men that went to see this movie to find out to kind of well, I guess to finally come to grips with the war and what had happened. A lot of the men, the way that they did the stereo sound or the way they did the surround sound inside the theater, they had to leave because they couldn't take it. They said it reminded them too much of this. And Daryl Shifty Powers had an opportunity to kind of do this a little bit differently, and he was able to share, and Band of Brothers was one of those things that you know gave him the opportunity to share, but it also showed that he came from a very simple upbringing and that things that he learned in the Appalachian Mountains uh, served him well when he did go to war back during World War II. And we appreciate you listening to the podcast. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do that by going to iTunes or to Stitcher or to your favorite Windows or Android podcast app. We're also on Twitter at Story Appalachia. So that's it until next week. Y'all have a great one. We'll catch you then. So long, everybody.